Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop and Lightroom. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Flames on a Path, brand new to Photoshop CC. Now, this is a companion to a written blog post that I did for Photolia. So if you'd like to follow along there as well, then there should be a link up on the screen. So let's jump in and see how it's done. So I've got my document all ready to go here, and it's 1500 pixels wide and high with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. Now I'm going to crop this down at the end, but this gives us a little bit of wiggle room to work with. All right, let's start creating those flames. And the first one I want to do is along the bottom of this document. And for that, I'm going to need a new layer to start with. So I'm going to click on new layer. I'm going to call this one bottom flames, bottom flames. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and get the pen tool and making sure that I'm on path from the drop down menu here. I'm going to click at this end and then shift and click at the other end. Now I could make this a curved or a wavy path if I wish, but for this one, well, a nice straight line will do me just fine. Making sure the bottom flames is now selected. I go to filter and render and flame. And you may also notice that picture frame and tree have moved here from the fill dialog box as well. Anyway, we want flame. So I'm going to click on that. And up pops a really big dialog box. Now don't panic about this. It looks more complicated than it is. And we'll go through them individually now. Okay. So the length, well, that's the length of the flames. And right now, 273 is about where I want it to be. In fact, all of these are set to about where I want it to be, but we'll have a little bit of a play and see what they do. So the length is just the height of the flames, really. There we go. And I can draw that back by typing in 273 and pressing tab and back it goes. Now, if you're getting a long time when you're going between them, then there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, you can come down, you can change the quality from medium to draft, perhaps. I'm going to stick with medium for mine though, for this time. The other thing you can do is to take this complexity down. So if I take that right down, you'll see that it makes the lines a lot simpler, or if I go up, a lot more difficult, a lot more complex, and obviously takes longer to render. This one's gonna take quite a long time to render, I should imagine, I've whacked it right up there. But you can see the difference now. For me, the complexity for this image is okay to be at 10. So that's where I'm going to stick it. Okay, let's go back up. Now the width here, if I drag this width up, you can see then that it makes the flames wider, as you might expect. Again, we don't need to do too much on that. Let's go back down to 70. The angle of the flame will angle it along the path. So right there, I've got 16 degrees. I could, if I wish, want to come up to 90 degrees. Let's try that. Or thereabouts, let's go 91. And you'll notice then that when it starts rendering, it goes right along that path. And that's quite useful if you want a jet engine or something like that. Right now, though, I'm quite happy for the flames to go straight up. So I don't want an angle at all. Next, the interval is the interval between the flames. So if I bring that up, it will spread them out a little bit further. I'm going to go back down to 30 for this image. The flame lines, the complexity we've already done. Now the turbulence, how turbulent are these flames? Well, let's bring this down and you'll notice then that they get a lot less, well, as if the wind is not blowing quite so much, or it's not raging quite so hard. Again, I like that where it was. So around about 50, 51 will do me fine. Jag is the jaggedness of the flames. So again, let's have a look at that. Let's bring that up and see by contrast what it does. So up it comes and then you'll see that the flames get quite jaggy all the way around. If I bring it down, then the flames lose their jaggedness. Again, I want to keep this around about the 41-ish and that'll do me nicely. Next, the opacity. Well, this is the opacity of each flame. Now, I don't really see this as opacity, although that's exactly what it is. I like to think of this as the heat. If I bring this up, it kind of makes the flames look hotter. There we go. Let's bring that back down again to around about 25-ish. 
and they cool off, but they're just more opaque. Now the flame bottom alignment. Right now it's set to 30, so there's this little jaggedness along the bottom of my flames. If I bring that down to zero, then you'll notice then that it sticks to the path. We get this nice straight bottom. Now that may be what you want. For me, I want 30 here, just to give it a bit of randomness. Next, we've got the flame styles in this drop down box. I'm just waiting for it to render those. I can have normal, I can have violent, or I can have flat. And you want to choose one of those, whichever one suits your purpose. For me, I think that normal is going to work quite well. Just wait for that to render again. And there we go. The flame shape is the way that it comes off of the path. So right now, mine are coming up parallel, but I can have them sort of slightly angled or spread out the oval or the pointed together. I think parallel will work well here. Now I could use to use a custom color. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, maybe they're not hot enough for you, but also if you're looking to do maybe something a bit more gassy, let's bring that into the blues, then we might be able to have a little bit of a blue flame and make it like it's made from gas. There we are. For this though, I'm gonna turn this off. There we go. We've already had a look at quality and the random shapes I'm gonna keep definitely on. I like them to be nice and random. So there we go, one last thing, and that's back up to the top, and you see this randomized length. I want to have that ticked, but I've left that till last because then I get a better sort of understanding of what I'm doing with my flames. It's personal choice. But now you see that we get this nice and even top to our flames. I quite like that. And for this part, I'm done. I'm just going to click OK. And off it goes, and it renders that out. Now, depending on your computer, this may take a little while. For me, I'm using quite a powerful MacBook Pro, and it's done it quite quickly. So there we are. That's quite nice. I can now move this around, bearing in mind that I want to move the flames, not the path. The path will stay where it is. I'm quite happy with that. OK, let's do some text. Now, I've already got my text already. You can see that I've got the words Halloween at Photolia. Now, I've done this as two separate layers, and I would strongly recommend that you do the same. Having too many paths makes the whole process quite slow and sluggish, as we've already found out, which is that one path. Here, we're going to make a path all the way around the letters, so we're going to separate it down into the two lines. OK, we need this text as a path, of course. So we can do that reasonably simple. We can bring that up and come up to Type and then down and create work path. And that's going to put a path around our letters. And that's all there is to it to make the path. I'm going to click off of that. Now, if you're familiar with working with paths, you may want to take the middle of the A out, perhaps, or the center of the O there. That's entirely your choice. Of course, you can play around with the points as well, but I'll leave you to do that on your own. OK, it's quite simple now. We just need a new layer. I'm going to call this one top text for ease, top text. There we go. And once again, I'm going to go to filter and render and flame. And it's going to put the flames on the path, but not before it gives us a warning telling us that the path is longer than 3000 pixels. Well, we already separate this down into two. We're not going to see all of the text in the preview, and that's OK. We just want to know that it's working reasonably well. Well, that really isn't the effect we're after. So let's go and change these. So the first thing I want to do is change the flame type. Now, we didn't look at this just a minute ago, did we? So let's bring that down. And you can see that we've got all kinds of things available to us. In this case, I'm going to go for multiple flames along a path. But you can see you've got all kinds of choices to use here. So I'm going to click on two. By all means, have it a bit of an experiment. But I won't hold you up longer than I need to in this tutorial. All right, now then, on to the dialog box. For this, I want a length of 60, a width of 19, and you can see it's already starting to take shape. The angle is grayed out now because of we're using the multiple flames along a path. The interval, we can go for 10, so we're going to squish them up this time. 
the flame complexity, I'm going to keep that around 10, the turbulence around 34-ish, there we go, the jagged, I'm going to bring that right down to 4, the opacity, I'm going to bring up very slightly, just to heat it up a little tiny bit to 29, now the flame bottom alignment, I want the flames to stick quite nicely to my text, so I'm going to bring that down to around about 3 in this case. My flame style is going to stick at normal and parallel for the flame shape. And that's all there is to it. And you can see that we've got this quite a nice effect going on already. Finally, for this one, I'm going to change my quality from medium to fine. It's going to tell me it's going to be very slow. And that's okay. I quite fancy a cup of tea. I can do that. I'm going to have a cup of tea while I'm waiting, if necessary. Now, before I click OK this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to Presets. I'm going to save my preset. Now, you see that I've already done this a couple of times, and I've saved it as text and text one. So just save it to somewhere that you can find it again, and then we can load it in in a little while. OK, so there we go. I'm going to click OK. It's going to be a little bit slower this time. There's a lot more path for it to cover. So what I might do is dip down and then come back when it's almost done, although it's not going to be too long, to be honest. So there we go, we're done now, and it's popped it on. There we are, lovely. All right, now we need that second bit of text. Now, this is done exactly the same way, although something strange is going to happen. So bear with me, don't just stop now, because you'll find that you end up with problems. So let's turn on the at Photolia. Let's go and use our type and create work path. Turn that off and then go to a new layer and call this bottom text. Bottom text. OK, and then go to filter, render and flame. Again, we get the warning. That's fine and dandy. Now, if you get a little bit of a fuzzy mess, don't panic. This has happened from time to time. Just click OK in this instance. If you've changed things in the meantime, then you can load your preset that you saved at the end of creating the Halloween. But either way, you're all set to go. Just click OK and it's all done. And it's going to render it out just like this. Maybe a little bit slower. I may have cheated a little bit there. And we're all done and dusted. All that remains is for us just to put these where we want them to be. And I can just bring that up, use the Move tool. Move that up. Let's go and turn those paths off and make those where we want them to be. Just something like that will be nice. And then crop it down to where we want it. There we are. I might even take the bottom of those flames off for this particular one. And there we are. We're all done. Now I could add some glow at the back to make it look like the background is being lit up by the flames. But I'll leave you to experiment and do that in your own time. I'm Merrick Reno. Thank you very much for joining me here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for even more Photoshop goodness. Take a look around the channel and see what else you can learn.